<laughs> yeah, it, right. I'm up for an adventure. Well, and that's what that's what actually Emily Dickinson says is that like Rebecca to Jerusalem, and she she's it's like the 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 country girl going to the big city, like right. the awe of going to see the world. I guess more than Isaac, even it was going to Jerusalem. So wouldn't it be funny if we heard it from her point of view, and it was like, you know, all all along, um, uh, what's his name? What's the servant's name? Oh, it doesn't say here, but his name's Eliezer. But I don't think it's in the text. Oh yeah, text, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all along he's thinking, you know that this has been orchestrated because it's, you know, it's Abraham and Isaac's wishes or whatever, you know. Right. Um, but in reality, it was Rebecca praying, you know, please right, yeah. send someone to get <laughs> yeah. me out of here. You know, I'll know him when I see him if he asks me to, you know, give him a sip from my jug. That's you know? great. I mean, That's can you hysterical. imagine if, if it was like... Because Eliezer gets in trouble, actually, for saying that, um, it doesn't say in the text, but, but in the Midrashim it says he gets in trouble for, for saying, oh, the first one who comes and waters my camels and does this, because the point is, well, what if she's blind, and maybe she, and, and then you're excluding somebody from God's choice. But mm -hmm. maybe maybe it was Re maybe it was Rebecca's prayer, yeah. not, uh, not Eliezer's that did it. She's like, all right, I'm oh. gonna uh, I'm gonna come out with my jog, and that's hysterical. <laughs> the first guy who asks me for a sip. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> that's wild. I wish Anita Diamant had written at the beginning of the Red Tent. We only get Rebecca in her in her dotage, but but I wish we, I wish we, she would Anita Diamant would do the same thing for Rebecca. Now you totally could if you, if you could do you for could. Dina, you could do it for Rebecca. But I, th I yeah anyway. So That's really funny. It's funny to think about. There, I, uh, well, I guess one other thing that jumped out at me is that he is that Isaac takes Sarah, um, sorry, takes Rebecca into Sarah's tent and. Um, right. Oh. Sarah's a conflict to her. That's. I mean, that's huge. Just like mom's gone. Yes. You fill her shoes now. You know. Yeah. Totally. And 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 the thing is, is that it's not. That's not just us doing like 21st century gender stuff because Ra because Rashi says that yes because Sarah's gone and Re and so Rebecca in you know Rebecca just and, and so uh, in Isaac's life because his mother's gone he needs a new woman and Rebecca fills that void in his life so the idea of wife is like surrogate mother oh yeah it's not very it's, manly it it's it's classic Though. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it doesn't get more classic than this, and it hasn't changed much since. I don't think. But it's not an ways. ideal. I mean, it's not something you want. I mean, because these patriarchs are. It's a, What's not an ideal? A, a, a woman, a wife, just being like, "Well, mommy's gone. Bring in, bring in a new one. Like, bring in." Sounds well, pretty ideal to me. <laughs> I think it sounds ideal to a lot of men, and I don't think that. I mean, I think that they're. A man wants to be a provider. I mean, not a, not just a, a material provider, but I, I don't think. Well, I may. I guess I'll just speak for myself. Well, no. Then think of it. It's it's okay. Then think of it this way. It's like you 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 grow up and you mature and you shift from your your dependency as a little boy on your mother to your partnership as a man with right. your wife. And so it's not like yeah. a, it's not a full on replacement. You know right. what I mean? It's just it's like it's the necessary shift. To move on, but right. it is. I mean, I think you know. I mean, it, it's hard not to. I, I mean, there's. I feel like there's always that overlap between like a man's relationship with his mother and his relationship with his wife, and there's always like the conflict that's there and the tension that's there. Yeah. And it's just sort of such a natural. But a wife can't repl like the the mother provides something that you can never ask of a wife, which is like totally unconditional love, and you can't like. I mean, maybe that's why men have been so big on making women chattel, because there's no other way to get them to to, to do what a mother would do, which is just think your shit smells great. Like, right. You know, like, right? I mean, it's... it's, it's yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess, yeah. But I, So I guess why it jumped out at me is because I do look to the patriarchs for... For, for ideals to which to aspire, and, and, and so when, when I don't see it... According to the art scroll, to bring in, to, to restore the conversation to the holy... I mentioned Rashi like ten times. No, you, did, you, you, did, you did real good for a guy. <laughs> the Sidra, meaning the Pasha, according to the art scroll here, shows Jewish, Jewish respect for the dead and concern for the future. These are essential concepts in Judaism. 
We neither reject what has gone before nor neglect what lies ahead. The narrative begins with the life with the death of Sarah and Abraham's intense desire to give her a proper burial in a place worthy of her greatness. So can we talk about respect yes. for the dead? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, I mean, ob that obviously is a running theme throughout this portion as well. Um, and I think it's interesting to see the, the, like, weaving together of that and of concern for the future. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's making the point that you sort of have to keep both in mind to be really balanced moving <coughs> forward. Right. Um, and I think that's cool. I think that's really important and it's it's probably like... It's more challenging to achieve than, than maybe it seems. Um, but yeah, that's exactly right, because that's what they do. They, they, you start off with, with burying the Sarah who's gone, and then immediately it turns to doing what he thinks he needs to do to ensure a good, a, a good future, which and is And so, Rebecca. actually, that might relate to exactly what you just said about um, Isaac bringing Rebecca into Sarah's tent, because maybe it's like that's a symbol of, of his saying, I'm moving forward with you, but in doing so I'm not forgetting my mother and everything huh. that she represents and everything that she means and and we're taking we're sort of like taking her with us as we right. move forward without her physically yeah you know I, mean? I don't know I, that makes perfect sense I like yeah, it like we're I, housing ourselves yeah. in her memory and in her history and I, don't know. I like that way better than Rashi's interpretation <laughs> I do <laughs> that, what was Rashi's interpretation well Rashi's was that you know the the a man needs a woman and first you have your mother and then once the mother is gone Rebecca just becomes the surrogate mother and so I think I, I, I like and I that think like more. that like that's obvious like yes sure that's a basic part of like living we grew up with our mom and dad and eventually we move on from mommy and daddy to husband or wife or whatever right. sure obviously right but but yeah I mean to to point out that this is a this is a portion that's really focused on those those two things together at the same time. Right. Yeah. That's there you that's go. that's a that's a to me that's a perfect um a, uh, that reading works perfectly and it's it's just preferable yes because it's honoring the past without trying to force in this case Rebecca to be exactly what you liked about the past which is the mother so yeah I mean it's a it's an honoring of the past while moving forward. I dig it. Somebody get that. I dig it. it. Somebody, somebody amend Rashi text. Um, <laughs> okay, according to the Art Scroll, at a hundred, Sarah was as sinless as a twenty-year-old. For until the age of twenty, a person does not suffer heavenly punishment. And at twenty, she still had the wholesome beauty of a seven-year-old who does not use cosmetics and whose beauty is natural. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein commented that a child's beauty is pure and is never used to tempt others to go astray. <gasps> Part of Sarah's greatness was that, despite her breathtaking beauty as an adult, all who saw her recognized her purity and innocence. Come on, fellas. You buy that? Do you, have you ever seen like a really beautiful woman and said, wow, I recognize her purity and innocence? I look into your eyes and I see the seven-year-old you once <laughs> were. I got bad news for you guys. You find a woman and you see all that purity and innocence, you're missing something. There's no, no one who's pure and innocent. I mean, yeah. you're trying to get women to conform to that? Like, good luck, fellas. You like, like, it's unfair, don't you think? Like, the, yeah. The, I mean, is that? Do you think that's sort of being written and presented as, as like, something to aspire to? Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. I think yeah. certainly Judaism and the art school. But I got to say, when I saw Helen at the juicy party, I immediately thought, this is a woman, despite her breathtaking beauty, I recognize her purity and innocence. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, 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 I. Um, I seed you that pleasure, and, and it's a wonderful thing. But, but maybe I'm just <laughs> at such a high level that I'm able to. Right, I think transcendental. I, I think you, yes, yes, because you, you have you have great access to people's spiritual yeah. nature, and so yeah. that's what. But you, thank you. Yeah. It's good to know. <laughs> it is. No, but come on, isn't that problematic? I think it is. I think it is. I think that's that's. Let's. I mean. 
Yeah, when ra the good Rabbi Feinstein says the child's beauty is pure and is oh. never used to tempt others to go astray. I don't know how many kids he's known. I know. Right, yeah. It's like... Learn the hard way that that's not that's the case. That's not the case. I mean, when he says that, that's no different than Ahmad Mejad saying, no, in Iran we have no gays. I mean, it's just like... It's like, yeah, it's like, well. Well, well, it's like saying, 